All right, fellas, here we're back in Pokemon Masters and Shave Castles, the Champion Stadium versus uh, Special. What the? F whatever. Nate. Uh, Neo Champion Nate, right? He's going to be the final boss of the stadium, or the champion, rather. Uh, and it's Fairy Week. Uh, I didn't know what stages there were when coming into this, but honestly, I, this is probably about what I expect. Sydney and Drasna together. That's fun. So uh, those are probably going to be where the big uh, the big boys are going to be going to uh, to try and clear those stages because those two can be a uh, touch annoying. So I guess let's go ahead, hop into these battles. Reminder: this is not a tutorial guide or whatever. This is kind of just me having fun using probably fairy sync pairs uh, or different fairy damage dealers, and I guess yeah, just having fun as previously alluded to. So our first battle here is against uh, Fairy Week Drasna. These are all Fairy Week. I don't know why I'm saying the weakness. Duh. Uh, but we got Diantha, Signature How, and Proton. In retrospect, if I were to change this around a little bit, I probably would put Egg Sylveon instead of How, simply because I want to run it. Uh, and this setup was not perfect, but it got me the win. So yeah, I don't really try and go too much for like a flashy victory, if I'm going to be honest with you. If I was, I probably would have guaranteed that or tried to get that flinch, at least from Proton's Air Slash. Anyway, big thing here, just mostly uh, buffing the stats with Proton, debuffing def uh, debuffing special defense where applicable, buffing speed with How, using Fairy Zone with How for the Sync Nuke and DPS builds and also the special moves next spam alongside Proton's uh, special moves next from the trainer move, and that's pretty much it. I mean, this is a simple setup, just trying to empower Diantha as much as possible. Uh, could have used like New Year's Lycia instead, could have probably used like regular Lycia. By the end of this, I don't really remember who I actually had left. I know I really didn't have too many limited fairy units left for the most part. I had the Egg Sylveon, had Mina, uh, but you know, those are those are characters you tend to generally you know, leave out anyway for the most part. Uh, pretty sure most of my fairy supports were also left out because most of them, besides like Penny and whatnot, are not like fantastic units. I don't know, I can't really remember too well. Either way, I mean, you can see how, you, you can see the way we win this battle, right? I mean, it's not really exactly a revolutionary win. But yeah, for the most part, I left out those of like, uh, Lodge Lily, um, regular Lily, Mina, uh, mostly just those types of characters for the most part. Didn't really end up using them. Could probably use them over Diantha, but oh well, whatever. I mean, I guess I could use the excuse that I like Gardevoir to justify having used her and also 1% health left, funny, and then Dazzling Gleam, goodbye, right? Of course, how chaos there. Otherwise, mid-unit. Uh, but yeah, I mean, sure, there we go, there's the win, whatever, nothing really too crazy for the first battle. I like these, I like the preceding battles quite a bit more, these, uh, final four, honestly. In this setup here, we've got Bead, Summer Marnie, and Neo Champion, Kalem. This is one of the setups that I did want to save Bead to use with Diantha, but I ended up getting the idea to run him alongside Marnie for double Galar and uh, obviously the special defense, sorry, special attack debuffs against Sydney here, who really wants special attack debuffs because he's got Furious Brain. Uh, a lot of his attacks can be special, so we do want to try and mitigate the damage from those as much as we possibly can. Caleb is here for a mixed offensive support, being able to buff crit and special attack and special defense by varying amounts, uh, which is satisfactory so that we get our offensives maxed with uh, bead, and we can also get physical moves next to Marnie so that her spirit breaks will be doing uh, some pretty overwhelming damage. Go ahead and go for the support decks with Kalem. Uh, use the G-Max Smite with Bead so we get that confusion in, which will therefore be empowering Bead's moves because he does have, I think, maximum superpowered and battle buff, I believe, or whatever it's called. Uh, so we will be able to get a lot of, oh, quite a bit long, quite a bit lot, quite a lot more damage, uh, out of Dazzling Gleam, and of course our nuke as well. Beat at 105 actually does have a relatively decent nuke for the most part. Uh, he does have any confusion for 100% multipliers, and then again, he's got maximum super powered and battle buff as well, so he will be getting, what is that, 240% total multipliers just at 1 out of 5? And if it was 6-star axe, of course, it would look even more impressive. On top of having the special defense debuffs from, uh, Stupefy? I forget what the ability's called, actually. I, I don't remember. I'd have to look. Uh, but getting the special defense and special attack debuffs together is extremely helpful, for sure. Yeah, Stupefication 9. So, that's very, very good for empowering Bead's nuke, and also, uh, like, not really empowering Marnie's damage at all, but her special attack, uh, debuffs on top of Bead's are gonna be useful for empowering his nuke to near maximum, for the most part. Either way, sick. Let's go. 
<laughs> Let's get in our swing move here with Bead and uh, just get rid of Sydney here real quick. My Bead is not EX, and if he was, this would be quite a bit more impressive in terms of damage, but 36,000 damage for a 1 out of 5 attack is without the 6 star EX and without his respective zone or rebuff or whatever. It's pretty good, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, there we go. Marnie and Bead do work relatively well together, I guess, with their special attack debuffs. Marnie covering DPS and then Bead covering the nuke. Pretty solid uh, negotiation, I guess. So that's nice. Third battle is against Hala. We've got ourselves the triple, uh, well, I guess double Furious of Girl and Valerie. Yeah, we got ourselves Valerie and her two uh, fucking sidekicks. I don't know what you would call them. Uh, model friends, workers, employees. I uh, imagine Valerie doesn't pay her taxes. Okay, so this was more so just for the funny of running all three of them together than actually having any synergy it was mostly just valerie carrying in terms of her nuke and damage with the super effective next spam and overall being a very solid free-to-play fairy sync pair for the most part um i guess you can see we did a little bit of damage with Catherine, and kaylee sure tanked yep i don't really think there's much else to add to this battle for the most part i don't really think that they it's not really a cohesive team i guess you could say that quad cube was necessary because we landed a lower roll on the side there, so we did not get to actually KO them with that Dazzling Gleam from Catherine. If we would have rolled a better uh, some, a better uh, damage roll, then would have probably KO'd for the most part, but oh well, didn't happen. But that's fine, it's not really that important uh, since we did quad cube with Valerie. Valerie's nuke does just barely enough to where most of the time Catherine's Dazzling Gleam would KO the Primate, so you don't have to worry about quad queuing, but since I did get the quad Q in, we're good anyway. Go ahead, go for the Swords Dance, maximize Valerie's attack on top of giving her, for, well, I guess maintaining her super effective neck so that her nuke is fully empowered here. Uh, go ahead and go for the Dazzling Gleam as well. Probably would be better to, well, no, I guess not. If the Gage Acceleration wouldn't have ran out, probably just better to try and quad Q with Valerie should this move not have KO'd, but being 6 star X and whatnot and being, again, overall very, very solid, very solid, very nuker. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, Valerie obviously got us to win right so there we go valerie and uh, the two furiso girls not exactly what i call a cohesive team but definitely one that works yep and here we are for fairy week bruno we got ourselves sycamore and serena palatine serena alongside palatine's mallow too actually did not intend on bringing two palatine's units but here we are so whatever this was mostly just using Mallow to maximize crit, maximize defenses, so that Bruno would not completely obliterate us with, like, close combats and whatnot. And then Sycamore is actually the DPS damage dealer. I would have been fine with running Sycamore as the tank, but he's not the most physically defensive sync pair, and also he does not have a, mean, a viable means of recovery besides Horn Leech, which isn't viable off-type, really. Especially if you don't, especially if you're intending to pick up standard damage reduction, so not really worth doing. <coughs> Either way, whatever. Doesn't matter too much here. Mostly just spamming comms for until we get Hunters and Sing max out on Serena. Uh, and also, I'm pretty sure maximizing her nuke as well. Whatever. Serena's only 1 out of 5 and no 6 star X, so she's definitely quite underpowered here. But th that doesn't really matter when her uh, Moon Blasts are able to pretty much keep up for the most part. And gritting Sycamore with the Adrenaline is very helpful too. <clears throat> I do wish Sycamore had Synchro Healing. Would have been a little bit more uh, better. <laughs> Obviously, it would have been better for his kid, but oh well. Uh, I guess I'm having recuperation is fine enough, no real problem there, but oh well, just think, just how things go. So, Serena does have ramming speed and Hunter's Instinct, so our, these, this Moon Blast is going to be fully powered up with max crit, special attack and speed, and max debuffs on the speed, uh, as alongside a few special defense debuffs from Mallow there, so Moon Blast does end up doing some pretty decent damage towards the end here. <clears throat> Was not able to attack an, uh, Bruno enough for... Serena's nuke to be able to KO here, so we do have to spend a turn uh, killing Moonblast to KO the middle with Sycamore, but at the end of the day, that's not really that big of a problem, <laughs> I would say anyway. Uh, I wish we would have been able to damage the sides a little bit more, but just due to the overall team's tankiness from Mal's healing on top of her defensive buffs, we're mo for, for the most part, we're just we're fine on damage. There's nothing really to worry about there. <clears throat> and we'll just get in enough damage with the Moonblasts and... KO the sides. Two shot them each time. It works out very well, surprisingly. So, yeah. There we go. 52,000. 52,000. 52 52% health gone. And then about at the same. So, it's kind of funny that even with two multipliers activated, Sycamore still manages to do roughly the same amount of damage on Moonblast that Serena does. And again, Serena's got actual multipliers, which Sycamore's very power five, but 
still an actual damage dealing oriented unit compared to a support uh being able to match in damage is pretty funny to this day and to finish off we of course have neo champion nate himself i saved this specific setup since the beginning for the double sylveon on top of bringing vol over just a funny win i guess obviously in their own right each of these sync pairs is really strong like penny is obviously the op pretty much the optimal fairy support uh, and Volo, of course, is, has a jack-of-all-traits manner, still being pretty strong for an on-type character, uh, or strong on-type, rather. And then Valerie, not really, but because of the special moves next spam on top of the special defense and uh, fairy rebuff from Penny, it actually does enable Valerie's damage to look pretty funny for the most part. So that's actually pretty impressive. Stealing those special defense debuffs from Nate ends up actually being pretty clutch too, because it does make Nate end up missing like half of his scale shots, which is quite funny. So I'll take it. That's cool. <clears throat> go ahead, go for Volo's nuke here so we get that fairy zone in there. Uh, I don't have to worry about the uh, buddy move trying to set it up again. And again, there's where the clutchness of the um, uh, the evasion buffs there were so that was funny and that draining kiss again because of this uh different buffs that vol is able to provide to the team with the Sinnoh circle the uh, team attack damage up uh, alongside the physical sorry, special moves next and whatnot it actually does enable value to do some pretty solid damage with draining kiss which is pretty funny pretty funny to think about and of course it's not even maximized either right like we could go for a second fairy buff if i would have had penny with a few dupes of course special defense debuffs now are maximized right uh, and there could have been probably a few more things to empower valor even more but the fact she's able to do as much damage as she is right now is honestly pretty funny <laughs> probably could have made her the tank and she would just heal back all the damage volo landing that uh hacker beam is not really necessary it does help out the team a little bit in terms of uh making us take a little bit less damage before nuking volo to all high hell but for the most part that ko on hyper beam did not really matter too much also did you see the damage that was pretty good damage if i'm gonna say so myself that's pretty funny uh, but whatever finish off here with the sync nuke with valerie not the most impressive sync nuke ever 50 percent multiplier is about the same as volos but hey i will take it for sure <laughs> i always like running valerie and sylvia on any chance i get used to run her alongside lodge lily having her do da uh, dps damage while lily did uh, aoe damage and of course you know the nuke and whatnot <laughs> they used to be my go-to fairy setup for a little while until i got a little bit better options mostly volo but hey, whatever. There we go. That's the end of the Fairy Special Pass to Champion Stadium. Uh, let me know what you thought about the battles. Let me know what you did for the battles yourself. If you need any help, of course, leave your you know, issues, I guess, down in the comments below. People will help you out. I'll, I might try to help you out best I can. Uh, and yeah, sorry if the commentary is a little bit lackluster, but hey, that's just how it is. If you want to watch the battles, you can just put me on mute, put some music in the background, and you get, some, uh, get yourself some relatively moderately interesting battles but yeah i'll see y'all later hope you all enjoyed good luck on your stadium battles if you have not done them yet uh data mine should be soon ish hopefully monday because i'm off of work that day for memorial day please <laughs>